Let me start with a question. Do we live on a good planet for life? Most of the people will say yes. And what better example than the Junque, our rainforest right here in Puerto Rico? A place full of life. You can hardly walk there, and everything there, if you, if you are there, uh, tries to, to, to bite you. There's plants, there are animals, a place very habitable. But not everywhere is the same. And this is not Mars. This is the Atacama uh, Desert in Chile. It's not that habitable. But still, there's life there. So we can make a difference in habitability, even in our own homes. So if we look at all our planet, life is present even from space. You can see it. About 68% of our land coverage is by vegetation. But still, we have many deserts, ice areas, not occupied by life. But imagine this, a planet more habitable than Earth. And what I mean is with more coverage of life, any kind of life, from microbial life, complex life, which includes plants and animals. We don't have to imagine very much because that planet exists or existed. This is Earth about 105 million years ago. In this planet, 97% was covered by vegetation. And this is up to 97%, that's the estimate. This planet was covered with more life. Everything on this planet has evolved to kill you. That's from the movie After Earth. This place was wet, was uh, warmer, and full of dinosaurs. Luckily, we were not there. And this is before Earth. It will make a, a better movie, too. In our solar system, only four objects, up to four objects, can be considered potentially habitable. And habitable means that they have the right, they might have the right conditions to support life, but we need to detect life. One thing doesn't imply the other. Those are Mars, Titan, Europa, and Enceladus. And none of these are Earth-like. If you look at them, you don't see life from space. You don't see even life from the surface, maybe as a surfer and microbial life. So these are not Earth-like. So if we want to go to see an Earth-like world, we have to go to the stars to see other planets and other stars, what we call exoplanets, planets in other stars. But we need to identify them, identify the stars with planets. And some of these stars with planets, some of these planets might not be that good for life. Worlds like Mercury, Jupiter-like, Venus-like, Neptune-like. We are looking for planets Earth-like. And we might find a few if we try harder. We usually call them Earth 2 or the next Earth. But if we look maybe harder, we can find something else. An Earth plus, a better place than Earth, a better world than Earth, more habitable than Earth. And I have to remind you the standard for, uh, for habitability here, more biomass. It doesn't necessarily mean more diverse in life, but more biomass. Usually, when you have a lot of biomass, you have a lot of diversity. So we are working in our Planetary Habitability Laboratory with prototype habitable exoplanet, trying to define what are the possible options for planets. From planets that are in the limit, barely habitable, to planets that are more habitable than Earth, which we call Earth Plus. Our home planet is some, in some point in between. We know this is possible, that this planet, uh, in theory, can exist, but we need to search for them. 
But the problem is very complicated because the evolution of a habitable planet is time dependent. Here, let's consider Mars as a function of time. We believe that Mars at some point in this, its early history was in the edge of uh, Earth minus type of planet, just barely habitable. And at some point through time, it cooled down and lost most of the atmosphere. Uh, during this time, then water was flowing on Mars. The case for Earth is more complicated, more interesting. Because at about the same time, we know that life started. So we have a, a very good idea that our planet was uh, really habitable at that time, but it has been very bumpy that how the habitability and life just move in this new planet at, until some point which we call Earth-like. So Earth-like is Earth today. <clears throat> so the main goal of us astronomers is looking for an Earth-like planet, a planet just like Earth, but we have to consider something else. What about an Earth plus? Can we detect those? Do they exist? So I have to define what's, what is an Earth-like exoplanet for astronomers, but the general idea what we get and we talk about an Earth-like planet is a planet uh, just like Earth with ocean, blue sky, beaches, deserts, uh, mountains, maybe forests full of life, or even intelligent life. <laughs> but none of these things can be measured now. These planets in other stars, these exoplanets are very far away from us. We cannot see this. We are very limited yet in the information we can get from these planets. So what is an Earth-like exoplanet for astronomers? This is an operational definition from what I can see. First, we can see their orbit. And we know from their orbit, depending on the type of stars, and there are four types of stars that are very interesting for the evolution of habitable planets, star, star F, G, K, and M. And our sun is a G star. So if the planet has the right distance, depending on the star, not very close, not very far away, they can, we can say, well, maybe it has the right temperatures for liquid water. So that's the first point, right orbit. But it also has to have the right size. Not too small, this is like more size. Not too big, about two times the size of Earth. Because if you are too small, you will lack atmosphere. If you are too big, you will have too much atmosphere. So there are some point in between, and Earth happens to be at that point. And we, these are the only two things that we can measure. We wish we can measure more, just the orbit and right size. So whenever you hear a press release or announcement that we found another Earth-like planet, oh, right orbit, right size. And size, uh, I'm using it loudly, because size means their mass or, or, or actually their radius, any of those. Um, is sometimes we have uh, problems measuring both. Our Earth is then around a G star and about this size. We call these uh, sizes, we have a name for them, so, so this thing, subterran, terran, superterran, or this is all called, also called in astronomy, uh, super Earth. But uh, this is a, our particular case, but all there are options, possible options. That at, at this time, we are not taking, we are detecting them, but we aren't taking that much attention because we are fixed on the Earth like. Right orbit, right size. So a little bit of history, the first exoplanet what were detected 21 years ago, very close from here at the Arecibo Observatory. Those planets were around a dying star, 
what we call a neutron star, and um, they, are, they are extreme planets, non-habitable at all, very small planet and a very uh, dramatic uh, end of a star. So, but this was a beginning, a beginning of a new era of exoplanet detections 21 years ago until today. Today we know of about 1,000 confirmed planets, those that we are quite sure that they exist, that they are for real, because this is very hard to measure. Um, but still we have many thousands just waiting for confirmation. This is our current status today. This is great. So what type of exoplanets are out there? Basically, we can divide this in two types, gas giants and terrestrial planets. And the red number is the number of each category. So these are planets like Jupiter and Neptune. And these are planets more uh, Earth size. Here's Earth, here's something like Mars size, Mercury size, and this is something, a super Earth, a category of planet that we don't have an example in the solar system. But all these three in particular, we think that they might be habitable if they have also the right orbit. So you see, oh, we know of 13 planets, just the right size, but I have to tell you, they don't have the right orbit. They are too hot. They hot Earth. So maybe some Venus are, are here, or, or, or Mercury in, 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 the, in the environment. So most of the planets that have been detected are big gas giants. And it has been very hard to detect the smaller ones. Luckily, the NASA uh, Kepler mission in the last year has been detected many more, but these are still unconfirmed. But you see now the big numbers for Earth-sized planets or Mars-sized planets, they are waiting for us to confirm, to make sure that they really exist. So there are many options there. But how many of those that are confirmed have the right orbit at the right size? This is the habitable exoplanet catalog. This is a catalog that we maintain our lab. And if you look at all the possible, only up to 12, all of these planets, and these are artistic representation of them. If you see Earth here and Mars for a scale, also Neptune and Jupiter, they are larger than Earth. We call them super Earth, but the super here is because of the size. So we consider that they, this might be, but we are still struggling, science, technology, and funding just to create better instruments to detect smaller planets just like the, the ones that I uh, mentioned before, but in the right orbit. And this catalog uh, started about uh, almost two years ago and has been a success. It's now the most visited exoplanet catalog in the world, and hecho in Puerto Rico. And the thing is, it's not only for scientists, it's for the students, it's for the public. And we try to put together here all the knowledge from these uh, discoveries and analyze in a different way and rank them. Rank them by how similar are to Earth, from most similar to less similar. So this similarity in both orbit and size. So if this one is has, has, has smaller, why is not here? <laughs> because maybe it's too hot, it's too cold. That's the issue. It, has, it doesn't have the right orbit. So what's the future of habitable exoplanet discoveries? Today, we only know their orbit and size. And we can say they are potentially habitable. Maybe in 30 years, if we are lucky, we will have sample the atmosphere. Actually, we are starting to do that in the big ones. But in 10 years, maybe the smaller ones. And then we might say they are likely habitable. More sure now. Maybe in 20 years, 20 years, we will have some idea of their surface. Not details of the surface, 
But what I mean is, the, actually, the surface temperature of those planets, as they rotate, we will see the light as it changes in, in intensity, telling you that it has ocean, clouds, land. So if we get all that information, maybe by then we will say, for sure, this is an habitable planet. We, we see oceans, and we know the atmosphere in the surface temperature. But that doesn't mean it has life. It just means that it has the condition. So if we are now very lucky by 30 years, we will have the ability to, looking at that light from the planet, I see the green of life, if, if it's covered with life like, like Earth. And say, finally, no, this is not only habitable. It's a planet full of life. So some main tweetable ideas. There are many types for habitable planets, some probably even better for life than Earth. And this is what we're trying to, uh, we're working on. Earth plus planets are more habitable than Earth and easier to detect because we think they are a little bit larger. It has to be a little bit larger for, be, for being more habitable. Our planet doesn't have all the right conditions. And we might have already detected an Earth plus planet, but confirmation will take many years of additional observation. Those that we have in the catalog are big. Maybe one of those, but still many years sampling the atmosphere, sampling the surface, just to de uh, determine if they are really habitable. It's always safe to end a presentation with Carl Sagan. Somewhere something incredible is waiting to be known. What? That's intriguing. An Earth-like planet? That would surprise me. Full of life? Yeah. But an Earth-plus planet, that would really surprise me. Thank you.